Here are some secrets known linked to known history. Shh, don't tell anyone. Hey, what's up, guys? The Lone Top Tens here with another awesome video just for you guys. An intrigating um, aspect of history concerns hidden features. Some were secret to on purpose, while others were buried over time and even forgotten. Concealed rooms, passages, and art can add more color to those who lived before, even to figures and monuments that are already well known. So here are 10 secrets known to link history. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, don't tell any of the secrets, because yeah, I'm pretty sure the st historians, or anyone who have found, who have made the secret room on purpose, or any secret thing, who has made it, will get mad. So we're going to go into number 10 with a secret room at Cofton Court. Cofton Court belonged to a Catholic family when King James I outlawed priests. During the persecution, which lasted through the 1500s and 1600s, supporters of the Catholic faith um, built hiding places known as priest holes. During the 1850s, the resident owners of the Tudor mansion discovered a secret room in one of the watchtowers, but the priest hole's ingenuity did not come to light until like 2017 or something like that. Most priest holes were deliberately hard to find and harder to access, but some were still found by search parties. The Cofton Tower revealed a final attempt to keep a hiding priest safe. A laser scanner found a hidden compartment inside the room, what appeared to be the real priest hall, and meant to fool soldiers into thinking it was empty, was a chamber constructed beneath the floor, but underneath was another small space, where the priest was likely really hiding. Cofton Court is known as the meeting place of the Catholic resistance on the day they tried to blow up the king in 1605. The most famous of the conspirators was Guy Fawkes. We head to number 9 now with the Apollos Room. Now, the home of Alexandria Apollos is not famous, but it could be connected to a chapter of United States history that remains unforgettable. Looking at Lounsdown, Pennsylvania, an area known for its history with the Underground Railroad, the old house was in need of repairs. In 2016, Paulos hired a company to fix cracked walls when she remembered an old story. Years ago, a neighbor had mentioned that there was a basement under the Paulos' house's basement. Back then, the tale went unchaste, but she asks the masonry, um, masonry team to investigate below the house when they were done with the cracks. That was when they broke through to a sealed room. It was 14 feet down and about 15 feet long, and about 6 to 8 feet wide. The local history leaves the room ripe to be identified as part of the underground movement that helped slaves reach freedom. Five minutes away, another house sat on a confirmed subterranean part of the Underground Railroad. However, more research is needed to eliminate the possibility that this chamber stored as a storeroom or or served as a storeroom, or hiding place for something else altogether. Number 8, we are going to travel to Sennacherib's palace. Now, in 2014, Islamic State militias razed another iconic landmark. This time, it was the shrine of the Prophet Jonah in, N in Nineveh. Um, I can't remember exactly how to say that, but you know. The Ephodice was said to mark the grave of Jonah, who was mentioned in the Bible and the Quran, and also in Judaism. Iraqi forces recaptured the hill on which it stood in 2017, and archaeologists were allowed to assess the damage. The ancient building had been blown up, but a remarkable find waited underneath the rubble. The archaeologists followed tunnels dug by ISIS, and were astounded when the tunnels led to a previously unknown palace. The 2,600-year-old building had not been harmed. Nineveh was once an ancient Assyrian city in what is now Iraq, and the royal residence was built for King Shennacherib. Um, now, two additional kings, his son and grandson, who resided there. It is not known what artifacts were removed from the ex by the extremists, but several priceless pieces remained. These included a marble inscription from 672 BC by Sennacherib's son in cuneiform, in early form of writing. In another tunnel were stone um, sculptures of a female deity. Done in fine detail, they showed the demigoddess's um, garden of mortals by casting drops of the water of life. 
All right, we're going to fly to number seven now with the um, Borogdor butterflies. Nessa of a Borogdor is a famous and well-researched archaeological site in Orkney, Scotland. This makes the latest discovery in July 2017 even more remarkable. The site, excuse me, is known for Neolithic standard stones and buildings, but one of the walls had a special block. It carried nearly invisible designs on the surface, so much so that they never showed up in a photographic images taken of the block. They were finally re revealed when somebody happened to be standing in the right place, looked at the block at the right moment, and the light hit the etchings at a certain angle. The chance discovery showed carvings roughly resembling butterflies or bow ties, or uh, forfalas, or yeah, whatever. The reason behind the vanishing art is not entirely clear, but scholars feel that the carvings were deliberately made to appear when the conditions are right. The hunt is now on to scour the rest of the site for more of the hidden symbols, which have been described as the finest found in Orkney so far. Alright, we're going to get into number 6 now with Cat's Brain Barrow. Now, in 2017, aerial photography revealed an unknown monument in Wiltshire. The area had been produced, had already produced stars like Stonehenge, Avebury, and Meridianhenge, Brit Britain's biggest, uh, biggest snow circle ever. The new feature sat in the farmer's field and was soon identified as a Neolithic long barrel burial mount. Art, situated halfway between Stonehenge and Avebury in a place called Cat's Brain. All of that remained were traces of a building with a ditch on either side. The earth that made up the now missing mount might have come from the trenches. The monument is around 5,000 years old and predates a murdered hinge by over a millennium. Considering the monument's age and purpose, researchers hope to eventually find the remains of the ancestors of those who raised Stonehenge and Avebury. The so-called House of the Dead provides the rare chance to study a long barrow from a time when the country's first monuments were being built. With any luck, it will also add something new to our understanding of this early Neolithic society. Number 5. A Ritual Landscape On, Ang on Anglesey, another 5,000-year-old burial mound called Brian Sully, um, do do. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to say that. Um, because, oh, guess what? I didn't use Google Translate. Sorry about that. Well, that delivered a surprise. Known for aligning with the summer solstice when sunlight eliminates the inner room through a courtier, the monument has been, um, has seen excavation since 1865. The past few years revealed that Brian Celedio was not a standalone wonder. Incredibly, it was surrounded by a vast ritual landscape that showed signs of use over ten over thousands of years. Ten rock carvings were found nearby, and more recently, pits filled with pottery and flint tools. The most exciting and biggest discovery happened in 2016 when archaeologists unearthed remnants of an ancient burial cairn. When the team returned the following year with ground penetrating radar, they found evidence that the cairn belonged to an entire cemetery of similar graves lying in the area around Buren Saledero. Alright guys, we're going to head to number 4 now with the funeral shelf of Jesus. Jerusalem's Church of the Holy, um, Sulfshire, is a 19th century shrine marking Christianity's most sacred place, the Tomb of Jesus. The building center is hailed as the location of the burial cave thought to be gone, like, way long time ago. I mean, like, pretend right now it's like the, um... 33 AD or something like that, and then it raises up its uh, rareness up. You could kind of think about it like that. In 2016, radar tests detected the original walls of the tomb. Encouraged by the presence of a cave, archaeologists remem uh, re remember to remove the marble slab set to cover the shelf where the body of Jesus once rested. Underneath the centuries-old panel, they found rubble. More digging revealed another marble slab. 
this time with a carved cross. When this second one was lifted, it exposed the original burial bed cut from the limestone wall. The finding shook the team, who did not truly expect to find a body shelf. Indeed, it was impossible to prove that this was the grave of Jesus. Even though the gospel states that he was buried in a rock um, tomb outside Jerusalem. At the time, so were many other Jewish persons, but none was taken as seriously throughout history. Around 125 AD, the Roman Emperor Hadrian built a temple over it. This was destroyed two centuries later by Constantine, who raised a church to protect the tomb. Alright, we're going to go to number 3 now with the Avebury Square. A diameter of about 1,083 feet makes Avebury the largest stone ring in Europe. Why a Neolithic society decided to arrange 100 massive stones into three circles sometime around 2050 to 2200 BC remains hazy. A unique addition may explain part of the story. Excavations in 1939 found a line of megaliths under the central obelisk. Alright, recent radar mapping added more hard stop and clarity. The 1939 quote unquote line was one side of a square monument enclosing the obelisk. Each side was 98 feet long. Discovering new hidden stones was unexpected and unusual, but also changes the theory of Averbarius beginnings. The World Heritage Site was thought to be built from the outer ring first. Yet another find suggested that Averbarius was built from the inside out and had humble beginnings. The remains of a wooden house dating back to like 3500 BC were found inside the square, which is 500 years younger. The rings were added during the centuries that followed. Why the central ruins deserve what archaeologists suspect is a grand show of respect remains unknown. The inclusion of a square in any hinge is also unheard of. Alright, we're going to go on to number two with the home of Sally Hemings. The Igna enigmatic um, Sally Hemings was one of 600 slaves owned by Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States. So she gave birth to several of his children while living at Jefferson's Monticello Mansion in Virginia, which part of the 5,000 acre plantation she called home remained unknown until archaeologists followed an old clue. One Jefferson grandson had mentioned that she lived in Monticello's south wing. Excavation sifted to that wing and unraveled why her room disappeared. To accommodate visitors, it had been turned into a man's bathroom in 1941 and was forgotten. Located next to Jefferson's bedroom, the real room soon reappeared. It was small, approximately 14.7 feet wide and 13 feet long, with no windows. Further digging found the original fireplace, floors, and walls built from rubble stone in 1809. Many of the artifacts found will be studied to paint a better picture of Sally Hemings' personal life. Almost nothing is known about her, and just four physical descriptions exist. A fellow slave described her as mighty near white, very handsome, long, straight hair down her back. Sally lived in a cramped, dark, and uncomfortable space, like very uncomfortable, but her living quarters showed she likely lived better than Jefferson's other slaves. Alright, we're going to wrap up this list with number one, Michelangelo's Chamber. The Medici Chapels Museum in Florence, Italy needed another tourist exit in 1975, prompting the director to assess where one could be installed. Instead, the search delivered a Renaissance treasure. Under a cabinet, they found a trap door leading to a chamber that looked like a plain storage room. The director's ex instincts revealed what some call Quote, quote, one of the major artistic finds of the 20th century. He ordered the wall plaster to be removed because he was suspicious that something might be underneath. Finding chalk and a chalk called drawings, Don Picanto, the director, concluded that the collection included lost work by the legendary Michelangelo. Several drawings had details similar to the master's greatest works, produced both prior to and after the chamber sketches. Don P uh, Pagetto also believed that these were created when Michelangelo hid from the powerful Medici family in 1530. A few years earlier, the artist had turned against his patrons by siding with the Florentines who wanted them gone. The, when the 
when the Medici's returned from exile, Michelangelo was not safe. Not all scholars are convinced that he holed up in the secret room. Some feel that the revealed artist would have received shelter from another patron and that the doodles occurred in the 1520s when he was commissioned by the Medici family to build their new by mausoleum.